All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So we'll be starting with your Pilates ball. Again, it is on the right rib cage. So pretty high, almost on your armpit, but not quite. And then again, I like a block for my head for support. So my head isn't super dangly. That's my choice. Um, you could take that or leave that. And then you do want to bend your knees so they're up in line with your hips so that you've got some nice support for your back, especially in the beginning here when we're, you know, maybe have just gotten out of bed or, you know, some people have just finished work or whatever. And you want to make sure that you are being really kind to your body as you start to move into these stretches and these releases. So the ball is underneath that right rib cage, pretty high, almost on the armpit, but not quite. And the very first thing we're going to do here is to simply breathe. And when I say simply breathe, I mean, you're focusing on your breath. You want to take some deep, deep diaphragmatic breath. And so that means breathe as deeply as you can into the lower belly. If you're not sure if you're doing that, you can actually put your hand on your belly or I like to sometimes put my hand on my rib cage to see if I'm expanding. So go ahead and start with some breath, ideally in and out of the nose. So take a deep breath in. And a slow breath out. And can you continue to breathe like that? So if you want, you can hold the breath at the top. That's just a little bit more intense breath work. So breathe in. Maybe you hold the breath at the top for four counts. And then it's a slower exhale. You could also hold the breath out at the bottom. So that's just layering on intensity for the breath if you choose. Breathe in. Option to hold. And it's a very slow exhale, slower than the inhale. And then option to hold the breath out. And again, we breathe in. Notice the ball underneath you. Your rib cage should be pressing into that ball as you breathe in. Hold the breath if you choose. Slow breath out. We'll go three more just like that. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. So if you're just joining us, we've got the Pilates ball under the right rib cage, high, close to the armpit. Not quite on the armpit, but close to it. Deep breath in. Maybe pause. And a long breath out. And again, perhaps pause at the bottom. And one last time, just really focusing on that breath, full breath in. And a long breath out. And then just continue to breathe as deeply as you can. Take your left hand to your left shoulder. You're going to start to draw some circles with your elbow. So just a kind, gentle waking up of the left shoulder. Doesn't matter which way, you're going to go both ways. Getting some movement into the shoulder all the while. There's some myofascial release work happening underneath you with that ball. And circle the other way with the elbow. Deep breathing. And then if it feels okay in your shoulder, draping your arm up and over your ear. If that doesn't feel okay, just rest your arm on your body. So do what feels okay in your body. 
couple more big breaths. And again, one more big one. And slowly exhale. Okay. So using your left hand to help lift you up, you're going to slide that ball down. So now it is on the waist-ish area, a portion of it is still touching the bottom floating ribs. And then kind of depending on the size of your ball, it might cover more area, but a portion of it is still touching the bottom ribs. A portion of it might touch your hip bone. It's right there on your waist. And we're gonna come back to a few deep breaths again first here, just kind of getting our bodies used to that ball being underneath us. Breathing in and breathing out slowly. The exhale is slower than the inhale. You can add the pause at the top if you choose and the pause at the bottom. And we're going to start moving into the shoulder again. So option, same thing, hand on shoulder, small movements with the elbow. If you want to go bigger, extend that arm out straight and make bigger circles. Your shoulder might not like that. And if it doesn't, you go to the modification with the bent elbow. And you could also make this bigger by moving your body. You can see I'm rolling towards my belly and then I'm rolling towards my back. Just pay attention to what your body needs. It might be too early for this bit of a twist into the back. If it is, then you make the movement smaller. Keep breathing. And let's go the other way with the arm, big circle or little. And one more. And then we're going to take some big breaths again. I'm going to remove my block because I've started to feel like I don't need it anymore and I'm gonna drape my arm up and over the ear. So you decide if you still need the block or not, and you decide if the arm draping over the ear is appropriate for you. Keep breathing deeply. And one more big breath. Okay, so we're gonna press up. Now the ball was or is right now under the right side. So now we're moving it to the opposite side of our body to the left and on the front side of the body, kind of to the left of the belly button and a portion of it is on my left hip bone as well. So it's on my belly, but to the left of my belly button. And then I'm going to take my left knee out to the side at about a 90 degree angle. So this is back to, I mentioned it briefly earlier. I think that was before I hit record, but we're working on the spiral line today. So we're going to be working opposite sides of the body. So just follow along. I know I'm not going to go like one side and then the other side exactly the same. I'm going to be working diagonally across the body like the spiral line is in our body. So first thing you're just going to do here is focus on the breath once again. As you exhale, you might feel sort of a lateral tugging on the tissue that surrounds and makes up your obliques and even into the left hip flexor. Big breath in, long breath out.
So even though sometimes it feels like it doesn't make sense, like, oh man, I have this kink in my right hip and then randomly, and it's not random at all. Now, all of a sudden I have this tweak in my left shoulder blade. That's the way the spiral line is in your body. So it's not random. It's actually pretty common. So if you have tension in one part of the line, it's going to pull up or down that chain. A couple more big breaths. We're going to keep the ball under the left side, but go ahead and extend the left leg out. And then bend the right knee. I'm going to flip around so you can see. So the left side for the ball, and then the right knee is out to the side at that 90 degree angle. Okay. Ball still under the left side, and then we've got that right knee out. From here, if it feels okay in your back, you can start to lift yourself up a bit onto the forearms. And then I'm going to start to move a little bit. I'm going to place my right hand on the ground and I'm going to start to move side to side. So I'm rolling a bit to the left. So I'm opening up and I'm rolling a bit towards the ground. So my body rolls onto my left side a bit and then I roll and face the floor and just back and forth here. Side to side. Some of you might know this part that I'm going to suggest, and it's pretty early in the practice. So if it feels like too much, please don't feel pressure to do it. You could bend your back leg and catch it with your right hand. So that's an option and you could still move. If that's really not available to you, don't worry about it. It's just a little added bonus that's not even required or necessary to get the benefit from this. So if you're able to catch the foot, great. If you're not, that's also great. Side to side. And if that's too much extension on your back lifting up, you don't have to. You could simply stay here and breathe. That's absolutely fine. Let's take three more breaths, whether you're moving or staying still, whether you have the foot or not, it doesn't matter. As long as you're breathing, as long as you've got that ball in place, you're good to go. And one more time. And we'll release. And we'll just come off of the ball for a moment, set it off to the side, maybe a little child pose here, or you can move through a cat cow just to move some energy. And then when you feel like you're ready, you can start to move to your second side. And when I say second side now, it's the left rib cage. Maybe you have a block or a pillow for support. So it's really quite high, almost on your armpit. And then the first thing we're going to do is just focus on that breath, maybe hand on belly, or maybe you just drape that arm on your top ribs. So you can feel whether you're breathing deeply or not. In and out of the nose is preferable if it's possible for you. Regardless, slow, intentional breath. Option to hold the breath at the top. And slowly exhaling. And holding the breath out at the bottom is also an option. As long as you're taking deep, intentional breath, you're on the right path. 
All of these added things are just suggestions and they're not required. Anytime we do work in and around that rib cage, of course, we are assisting our diaphragm in working better, functioning better. Our diaphragm is our breathing muscle. Very important that it functions well. One more big breath in. Maybe a pause. And a long breath out. Right hand to right shoulder and we'll draw circles with the elbow. Keep breathing. Keep moving into ranges that feel good for you. Other direction with the elbow. And then if it feels okay in your shoulder, draping the arm up and over the ear. I'm taking three more breaths here. Pressing into your right hand to help you lift up. And we'll slide that ball down. So remember, a portion of it might be by the rib cage, but it's down much lower than it was before. And then we'll just start with a few deep breaths again here. Checking that those knees are up at 90 degrees. If you're having any discomfort, you could also support with a ball or a block between your thighs. And then we're gonna start to move the right arm in a big circle or a small circle. Remember, you control your experience. So. If you want it to be really big, you can roll all the way towards your belly, roll all the way towards your back. If you feel like your shoulder doesn't like the big movement or your back, you make it smaller. You can even just do hand to shoulder again. Let's circle the other direction, big or small. And then we'll drape the arm up and over the ear. At this point again, I feel like I don't need the block anymore. So I'm going to remove it from underneath my head. And we're going to take a few deep breaths here. If the arm over the ear doesn't work, just go ahead and relax it on your body. One more big breath. And we'll carefully start to lift up. And then we'll be placing the ball on the right side of the belly to the right of your belly button. 
portion of it is crossing your hip area as well. First, we'll take the right knee out at about a 90 degree angle, and then we'll breathe. So when you exhale, see if you can experience this lateral kind of tugging because the ball is attached to your superficial layers of your fascia and you should feel as you exhale the ball gripping and pulling the tissue to the right. If you want to experience this even more, maybe you actually put the ball on your skin rather than over a layer of clothing. Couple more big breaths here. I'm gonna start turning around so that you can see what happens next. So go ahead and extend the right leg out and bend the left knee out to the side. Now the ball is still in the same place. And then you'll start to lift onto the forearms if your back is okay with that. For some people it's not. And if it's not, you just stay down and breathe. Once you lift onto those forearms, leave the right forearm down, left hand comes to the ground and you'll guide yourself into some rotation. I'm rolling towards my right side and then towards my belly, towards my right side and towards my belly. Just a little side to side massage across the oblique tissue. Perhaps I reach back and catch my right foot behind me. That's going to add, of course, a quadricep and hip flexor stretch. If it's not easily accessible, please don't struggle. Don't worry about it. You're still getting all the benefits, even if you don't catch the foot. Three more big breaths. And we'll gently start to make our way off of the ball. Go ahead and move it way off to the side so it's not in your way. You're going to go ahead and lay down on your back and we're going to do a couple of Releases here for the side body. You're going to start with your feet as wide as your mat. And go ahead and take your right arm straight out to the right with the palm facing up. Left hand, you're going to start to slide it across your right arm until you're basically rolling onto your side and reaching past your fingertips. Try to keep this left heel connected to the earth. So try not to just completely roll over is what I'm saying. You want to feel this whole left side body, maybe left hip flexor, really lengthening out. I'm rolling onto my right side. I might feel a stretch in the back of the right shoulder. You might even start to feel and experience how the left side of your body is connected to the right here. And then you're just going to continue. So you slide on your back and meet shoulder and just keep repeating that roll on your side nice and slow experience this don't rush through it I really like to take a full round of deep breath in and out not rushing in any way lighting it over and I'm really still reaching that left leg away from myself. So I'm not letting my whole body just end up on this on my side. We'll do that one last time. Good. And then you end up on your back. So both feet are going to end up if they moved their back as wide as your mat once again. 
We're doing something a little different. We're not going right to the other side yet. Arms will reach either straight over your head. If that doesn't work, you can bend your elbows. But once you have your arms over your head to your best of your ability, you're going to start to arc your body to the right. So this, if you're familiar, this is going to end up being what we call banana pose in yoga. So I'm arcing my body to the right to feel a stretch on my left. If all you're feeling is a pinch in the right, take a deep breath in and try to melt your backside of your body back towards the earth. We're not rolling on our sides anymore. That was the last one. Now you want to keep your chest facing the ceiling. Go ahead and catch your left wrist and give it a little tug. Again, arms can be bent or straight depending on your shoulder. One or the shoulders, one or the other will feel better. Once you have that arc over to the right, start to walk your left foot over to the right foot. It might not go all the way over. If you feel a pinch in your back, just pause there, take a breath or two, and then maybe you're able to move it farther. Maybe not. Maybe eventually you're able to cross the left ankle over the right thigh. That's not for everybody. So you do what works for you. Every time you exhale, keep melting your left shoulder blade back towards the earth. If you've kind of lifted up, try to get the whole backside of the body back down onto the earth. Chest is facing the ceiling. Hips are facing the ceiling. I'm going to go ahead and stand up and show you what. It looks like on the ground, it basically looks like this. So you look like a banana, sort of. <laughs> so you're arcing over to the side. This is what it looks like if I was laying on the ground. Okay, Maybe the feet are crossed, maybe they're not. But all you're doing is arcing over to the side. Three more breaths. And you'll start to make your way back to center. Bend your knees, step your feet as wide as your mat and windshield wiper your knees side to side. I'm gonna flip around so you can see the whole thing on our second side. So when you're ready, feet are as wide as your mat, Left arm is reaching out to the left. Right hand meets the left shoulder. And you start to slide on your side. Reach past the fingertips. Keep reaching that right leg away. You should feel something in the right hip flexor and across that body as you reach. And you slide back onto your back again. And repeat. Keep breathing. Breathe slowly and you come back onto your And you just keep slowly moving in and out of this roll onto the side. Do it two more times. And one more time. And then coming back onto your back. And we're gonna start to move into that banana posture. So arms over your head, straight or bent. And you're going to arch your body, arc your body to the left. Remember chest continues to face the ceiling. You can grab your right wrist, give it a little tug for a little more, and start to walk your right foot over to the left foot. Maybe it doesn't go very far. As long as you're feeling the right side body stretching, we're good. If you can go farther after a breath or two, go farther. You can cross the right ankle over. You cross the right ankle over the left. It's not there for you. You go the distance that feels the right in your body. 
keep breathing, keep melting the right shoulder blade back towards the earth. Three more big breaths. And slowly we make our way back onto our back. Step your feet wide on your back, bend the knees, a little windshield wiper of those legs side to side. Okay. So next, you'll be needing your block, or for some of you, a foam roller will be more appropriate. We're going to be doing our lat release on the right side. This can be pretty... Um, uncomfortable on a block, oh, it can be uncomfortable on a foam roller as well, um, but do use what's going to be okay for you today. I'm not saying it's not going to be a little uncomfortable, but we want to make sure we're still able to take a deep breath. So either the block or the roller is underneath that armpit area. Find a place where you're feeling something, but not so much that you're freaking out. <laughs> The so palm is down on the ground. We'll start with that there. I like to put my hand behind my head for support. If you're on the roller or the block, make sure you're far enough forward that when you roll backwards, you don't fall off the back. We roll towards our bellies, roll towards our back. And again, whatever feels good for your knees here. If you need support between your thighs, do bring them up to 90 degrees though. That's more supportive for your back. You need some more support, a block or a ball underneath, or excuse me, in between your knees might be appropriate. So bottom arm on the ground. If you wanted more, you could actually put both hands behind your head. Just watch out for that bottom elbow. Don't bonk it. So you're going to need to keep it lifted a bit. So if you're not feeling anything, um, adjust your body. Maybe it needs to go up or down on the block. And again, same thing if you're feeling too much. If no matter what you do, you're feeling too much, I recommend putting a towel or something, a blanket between you and your block or your roller. That will absorb some of that pressure. Just a few more times, rolling towards the belly, rolling towards the back. And we'll release that. So go ahead and set your block off to the side. You're going to need a single yoga two-nut ball now. So one of your balls out of your tote. For this next one, I'm going to show you how you can do it on the ground. If it feels like it's too much on the ground, you'll get up and use it at the wall. So we had that block underneath the armpit. Now you're going to find your armpit and slide the ball right behind. So here's my armpit and I'm sliding it back. So it's on the back side of my body, but right behind my armpit. So you're going to go ahead and place the ball there and you're going to be on your side if you can. And that can be a lot. Now here, a, a block might be nice for your head. You're going to start to move your arm. Okay. I'm just telling you, this can be a lot if you're just whoa, no way. Go ahead and get yourself up and do it at the wall. Don't be afraid to get up and do it at a wall. This can be a lot. So you're just sweeping the arm. You can do some internal and external rotation. So again, we're right here. 
whether you're at the wall or on the floor. And again, don't be afraid to get up and go to the wall. I'm telling you, this is probably one of the most intense ones. So don't be afraid to modify. You can make some circles. Again, I mentioned this already, internal, external rotation with a bent elbow. Sweeping the arm. You could also simply pin that ball and just be still and take a few deep breaths. And then maybe you move again. So the goal, if there was going to be a goal, <laughs> is to start to experience some level of softening during this process. So our goal is to hopefully have it soften, feel better as we do this, not worse. So if you're going too deep, it might feel worse. If you're going too deep, it might not soften. And if it's really not letting go at all, you might need a little less. So again, that would be probably going to the wall. Couple more breaths. So hopefully everybody's on their right side because the next thing we're going to be doing will be on the left side, but not the direct opposite side of the body. We're still working on that spiral line. So now, God, I'm relaxed. We're going to lay down on our back. And the ball is going to go underneath your left glute. So all the way down on your back, go ahead and place the glute, the ball underneath your glute. And the first thing we'll do is start to drop that left knee out and in. So make sure you are feeling something. Okay. So there's going to be places in your glute where you're like, oh yeah, that's it. And there'll be places where you don't feel anything. So if you're not feeling anything, move the ball. Usually if you move it more lateral, most people feel more there. And if no matter what you do, you're not feeling anything, you can come all the way up to sit or even come to part way up and come onto your forearm. That's going to put a lot more pressure on there. And of course, if no matter what you do, it's way too much, then you could go to the wall and just kind of roll around on the wall with the ball. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. We are on the left glute, knee going in and out, or you're up at the wall rolling around. You're either laying down or you're partway or all the way sitting up, depending on what you need. If you haven't already started to move that ball out to the left, move it out to the left a bit. That is usually an area that tends to be a bit more locked up for many people. So give that a try. If you haven't already, move it out to the left. And then let's go ahead and move the ball all the way to the top of the glute, right below the hip bone. And you're going to start to shimmy your hip left to right. You can leave both feet on the floor, or you can bring your left ankle over your right thigh. That usually gives you a little bit more. Same thing. If that's not enough, you go ahead and sit up part way or all the way. If you're at the wall, again, just move that ball up at the top of the glute, right along that hip bone ridge. Check in with your breath. Make sure you're taking deep breath. You have about five more big breaths. If you feel like you want to revisit 
an area. Maybe you really needed to spend more time by the outer upper glute or maybe the middle of that glute. Maybe you feel like you want to just pin that ball and take some deep breaths and not even move. All of this practice is an exploration. You find your way by paying attention and just moving the ball as you see fit. One more big breath in and out. And then we're going to start to move out of that. We're going to go back to our block or the foam roller was the other option. Putting that underneath the armpit area. Laying that left arm down. Make sure you're a little forward on your block or roller so you don't fall off the back. I like to support my head with my top hand so my neck is supported. You don't have to do that. It's just a choice I like to make for myself. And we roll towards the belly, roll towards your back. Keep breathing. And then just keep adjusting the block so that it's doing something for you. I mean, you might as well feel it if you're going to do it, right? But you don't want it to be so much that you are causing anxiety or potentially more inflammation. If you wanted more, both hands behind your head, just watch out for that bottom elbow so it doesn't Run into the ground. You'll have to keep it a little bit pulled up. Couple more big breaths. All right, and we'll remove the block. You're back to the one where we take that yoga tune-up ball, single ball. It, you can start with it at your armpit and then just roll it to the back. Again, this one might be one that you want to go to the wall. I like support under my head because I don't like to have to hold my head up. So you're basically on your side, otherwise you won't really be able to access this one. And you might already know, yeah, I need to go to the wall. So if you already know that, go ahead and get on up and head on over the wall. The movements are the same. Sweeping the arm, internal, external rotation with a bent elbow. You can make some circles. And of course, you could simply lay that arm and just let gravity do the work while you breathe. Also check in with your back if you need more support, maybe a block or a bolster or something between your thighs would be nice. Keep breathing. This can be a very tender area. This is an area that when it is locked up, it can really limit your range of motion, particularly overhead. So if you have trouble doing like a shoulder press or a lat pull, just simply reaching over your head, it could be because the tissue in and around your lat is super stuck. Just a few more big breaths here. So 
Okay, very good. So we'll start to move to the right glute now. So starting on your back, ball underneath your glute, letting that right knee go out to the side, out and in, goes out, then points towards the ceiling, and out and points towards the ceiling. And then again, you just keep moving that ball around. So if you're not feeling it, move it. If you're feeling too much, you move it. If you haven't already, go ahead and move that ball more lateral. Put on my outer glute. Remember, if you needed more, you can come up onto your forearm or sit all the way up with your hands behind you. And if you needed less, you would go to the wall. And then moving the ball to the very top of your glute, so right at that hip bone, and the hips will move side to side. Option, you can cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And continue to breathe, continue to check in. All right, go ahead and take the ball out. Uncross the ankle just for a moment. You're gonna step your feet wide and a little windshield wiper of those legs. Again, side to side, just giving our body a little moment to relax. And then go ahead and step the feet closer together and you'll cross your right ankle over your left thigh again. From here, you're going to step your left foot to the left and let both knees fall over to the right. You're gonna be feeling a hip flexor stretch on the left thigh. You control the experience the more you Press down onto your thigh, the more you're going to feel. Do check in with your back. If it's too twisty on your back, you might want some support under your right thigh. So the biggest experience should be the left hip flexor and thigh, not your back. Doesn't mean you won't feel something in your back, but the biggest experience should be a lengthening of the left hip flexor. And then continue to breathe here. Now I'm going to give you an option and I'm going to flip around so you can see what it is. If your ball, yoga tune-up ball is still handy, you could slide it underneath your left upper trapezius 
And then you could start to move your left arm around here. So you're experiencing left thigh and hip flexor. And at the same time, a little release on your left upper trapezius. It's an option. You can take it or leave it if you'd rather just relax here into the hip flexor stretch. Completely honor that and take care of yourself. So again, if you're choosing it, fall under left trapezius. You're moving the ball or the arm, excuse me, around the ball is pinned underneath your upper trap. And then maybe you're moving the arm around. Or maybe you're finding a place to just simply let that arm pause and let gravity just do the work for you. Five more breaths. Slowly start to unwind, removing balls and blocks. Step your feet wide on your mat. Keep your knees towards each other and take a couple of cleansing breaths. And then you'll start to walk your feet closer together again. Left ankle comes over the right thigh. You'll step your right foot to the right and the knees fall to the left. And once again, you wanna check in and make sure the biggest experience is your right thigh and hip flexor. If it's a lot in your back, I do highly recommend some support block ball bolster under your left thigh. And remember, you also have that option to slide a yoga tune-up ball under your right upper trapezius. And then you could start to move the arm or not. And remember the ball is an option, meaning you don't need to place that yoga tune-up ball underneath you. But if you'd like to, you can. You can move the arm, it can be still. Keep breathing deeply, intentionally. Five more breaths. Mm -hmm. 
slowly you start to come out, removing balls and blocks. Unwind your leg. Once again, a little rebound here, maybe TP your knees towards each other, take a couple of cleansing breaths. And then we'll roll to the side to make your way up to sit. And then we're going to come into a 90-90 position. So when I say 90-90, the front leg looks kind of half pigeonish, but the back leg is also bent to about a 90 degree angle. So we're gonna start to move over the front right leg Maybe your hands are on the ground, maybe they're not, but you're not gonna stay there. You're then going to rotate around towards your left back leg. Adjust the bend of your left knee so that your left knee is happy. And then we take it forward, hands can come down, or if you have the ability to not use your hands for support, it becomes more dynamic, a more of a mobility routine. You're strengthening and stretching at the same time. But if you need your hands, please use them as much as you need them. Slowly keep moving back and forth towards your front right leg and then around towards your left back leg. Maybe you start to really reach your arms out for a little length through the lats when you reach forward. And then you don't stay there again. You're going to rotate. You can use your leg to give yourself a little twist to the back. Watch your back. Make sure it's moving from your middle back when you rotate. Lengthen, brief pause. And then rotate towards the back. We'll do that one more time. Reach. And then we rotate towards the back. And then put your hands, both of them, behind you and start to slowly windshield wiper your knees back and forth. Working into your hip, internal and external rotation here. Good. And then we're going to do our second side. So the left leg is forward, right leg is back. With or without hands, we'll Lean towards the left front leg, rotate towards the right back leg. Take it forward again. Maybe you support yourself with your hands and walk it, walk it, walk it. Or maybe you keep your hands on your hips and do it without hands. And we'll start to add in that big, long reach. So lengthen on a diagonal as far as you can, reaching, lengthening through your lats. And then you can take a hold of your leg and a little bit of rotation. Think of moving from your middle back. And we reach. And we rotate. And we reach. And we rotate and we do that one last time. We reach and rotate. Hands behind you, windshield wiper the leg. One last time, nice and slow, pause and rotate the leg, pause. And pause. And pause. Good. And then finding your way onto your back. 
If there's anything else you feel like you need before your Shavasana, please take it. Otherwise, go ahead and extend your legs or if bent legs feel better, then you take bent legs. Allow your arms to come down by your sides. Give yourself this opportunity, this gift of relaxation of truly just doing nothing but just being, allowing the practice to become a part of you. Take a nice big breath in. And an open mouth. <sighs> Let it go. Thank you for joining me, my friend. Namaste. Mm -hmm.